According to Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink's full-size version 2 satellites may be canceled. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside and that is it. So good, so good, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. I was watching a couple of videos and reading some articles. And I want to bring this to your attention. Elon Musk made a comment that is kind of strange. Basically, during an interview, he referred to the larger Starlink satellites as version threes and that they will be launching in 2024. Very strange here. Very strange. During last week's ICA, which is the 74th International Astronautical Congress, it is a convention, let's call it. And this just took place and he was interviewed. Elon Musk was interviewed at this convention and there was a lot of revealing things that came out. Now, I don't know if these came out on purpose or were they accidental? I don't know, but I'm going to bring them to your attention because I think that they're fascinating. I think that they could affect each and every one of us that uses SpaceX Starlink now and in the future. I was reading a bunch of articles and one of them kind of did a pretty good job summarizing what happened during this. Now, I watched the entire thing. I'm going to go through this summary for you and then I want to give you my take on it. And then most importantly, I want to know your take. What do you think? I'm also going to give you some of my, let's say, digging in a little deeper details that I found. Some things that I've never heard of before that once again, I don't know if he accidentally put this out here or it was on purpose, but either way, once again, we're going to go through it. So let me start out with this article and then we'll get a little bit into it deeper. Before we get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? Go check them out. They're over at jchristina.com forward slash books. They're 100% free. Also, if you get anything out of this video, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. If you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist just for you. Go check that out at the end of this video. There's almost 200 Starlink videos over there. Definitely look at those. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. They gave us a promo code, which is Christina. You can use that to get 15% off. If you just need a VPN or if you need to do port forwarding, or get a static IP address, check them out. You can go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. So now that all of the housekeeping is out of the way, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying it's taking longer than expected, but SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is hoping 2024 will be the year the company finally launches Starlink satellites using the Starship spacecraft. Musk made the remarks during the International Astronautical Congress 2023 event where he was asked when Starship would be used to deploy Starlink satellites. Quote, I think there is a good chance we will start deploying Starlink version three satellites next year, roughly a year from now, he said. Version three. The statement also appeared to be the first time that SpaceX has mentioned version three Starlink satellites, an indicator the company is preparing more upgrades to the space-based internet network. Currently, SpaceX has been launching the version two Starlink satellites using the reusable Falcon 9 rockets. Well, they're actually version two mini satellites that they've been launching, not the maxis or the regular version twos, the large versions. Anyways, in contrast, Starship promises to accelerate the satellite deployment since it's large enough to carry 50 to 100 Starlink satellites per launch. I think it's over that. I think it's about 150 to 200 of the large ones, but don't quote me on that. The only problem is that Starship remains a work in progress, which has delayed Musk's plans to operate the spacecraft this year. In April, the company conducted a test flight that resulted in an explosion and and environmental damage. 
Of course, got to know where this is coming from. This is PC Magazine. They are biased. So you're going to hear an explosion and environmental damage and all of this. This is what happens. It doesn't matter if that's really the case. Like if they hit a self-destruct button, that was the explosion. The environmental damage was minimal. But you're going to get that from this take. That's okay. Once again, know where your information is coming from. And then everything is fine. SpaceX is now waiting for regulatory approval for the second test flight. Musk added, quote, the hardest part about this or the part that will take the longest is solving for safe ship re-entry and landing. So in the meantime, SpaceX has to settle for using this smaller Falcon 9 rockets. Still, Musk said one drawback to the Falcon 9 is how it takes, quote, at least a few days to refurbish and fly them again. Starship, on the other hand, is designed to be fully and rapidly reusable. Currently, Starlink spans over 4,800 active satellites, but the company is aiming to expand it to tens of thousands of satellites about 42,000 to be exact, assuming SpaceX can get regulatory approval. They will. So that is kind of their take on it. Now, I went and watched this entire thing, this whole event, the IAC event, and there was about, this interview was about an hour long. So I went through it and I made some notes and some of these notes I think are very interesting and they weren't really talked about here in this article nor any other article that I read. So I want to go through some of them with you. Now, the first and foremost is he ended up winning this World Space Award, right? Obviously, he was going to win this. Who in the hell else would win the World Space Award? Jeff Bezos? <laughs> no, right? No. So he did win this award, which is kind of cool. And that's why he was probably there for that hour interview. Anyways, the other thing that I found was interesting is during questioning here, during this interview, it was found or was said by Elon Musk that he believes that he will get an unmanned version of that starship to Mars within three to four years. And he was explaining this in such a way that I thought was very interesting and how Earth and Mars are not synchronized, let's say. He was talking about orbital synchronization and how Earth, obviously closer to the sun, is going to be revolving around the sun quicker than Mars, which is further away from it, which is going to be revolving slower. And it takes about 26 months for it to be in sync. So the Earth and Mars being close together. All right. So if you're going to send a craft from Earth to Mars, obviously you want them to be as close as possible so you don't have to travel as far. Right. Which makes sense. Now, one of the questions that I thought was really interesting is how are we going to communicate with people on Mars once we get people there? And he described this exactly how we have talked about this in the past. And the idea that I posed about two or three videos ago where Starlink is actually a mesh network, all right? Right now, Starlink is a mesh network of 4,800 satellites. And about half of those 4,800 satellites have inter-satellite lasers, communication lasers built on board that can communicate from satellite to satellite to satellite, forming this mesh network. Well, that's kind of what he was talking about here a little bit about communication with Mars. You know what? Let me pull something up on my screen for us. So check this out. I just brought up a chalkboard because I want to draw this for you because I think that it is very interesting and it gives you an idea of how this whole thing will work. So if we have the sun right here, all right, this is the sun, for example, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to label this as the sun. And now we have the earth that goes around the sun and let's say this elliptical orbit. And then we have Mars that goes around the sun, maybe out here somewhere. Now, what's interesting here is if we put the earth right here, let's go ahead and label this as earth. The Earth is right here. Obviously, the Earth is closer. And then let's put Mars over here. All right. This makes sense because this means that we are in sync. And at this point, Earth and Mars will be at its closest distance. So this is where you're going to want to launch your starship to get to Mars. Obviously, you are at your closest distance between Earth and Mars. But now what happens with communication here? 
If we're this close, having a laser that goes from Mars to Earth and Earth to Mars is not a problem, right? Well, what happens when Mars now moves over to this location? All right, so now we have Mars over here. What happens to communications? Because obviously you can't get a laser beam and shine it through the sun. It's just simply not gonna work. So what do you do? Well, Elon Musk answered that question by saying that we have to have multiple satellites to be able to reflect that signal around the sun. So that makes sense, right? So what are we doing here? Let's say if we put a satellite here and we put one here and here and a satellite here and here and here, just for an example, all right? And we have all of these satellites. When the sun is sitting in between Mars and Earth, what will it do? Well, the signal would go from this satellite to this one, from this one to that one, from this one to this one, and then it would beam its way right back to Earth. Makes sense, right? So each one of these satellites that will be in the Mars orbit will act almost like a mesh network, just like what Elon Musk is creating here on Earth. So think about this in each orbit for every planet, placing a bunch of these Starlink satellites in the orbital path of each one of the planets, meaning that it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be able to get signal. You're going to be able to get back to Earth with your information. What he also said that was interesting here is we're not talking about megabits of data or gigabits of data or terabits of data. We're talking about petabits petabits of data. We're talking a ton. And the reason he said that is because we're going to need a lot of data and timely data going from Mars to Earth at all times. There needs to be timely communication between planets, timely planetary communication, let's call it. And this communication needs to happen even when we are not synchronized when we do not have that orbital synchronization between the planet of choice, being Mars at this point, and Earth. So I think it's very fascinating how they are deciding to do this. Basically, once again, creating this massive mesh network in our solar system. Very cool. Also, what I found interesting here is that they're going to create another Boca Chica that we see in Texas for launching Starship. They're gonna be creating another one here right up the road from me at the Cape, at Cape Canaveral. That is awesome because now they'll actually have two locations to be able to launch the Starship, two launch pads. Also, what I found fascinating is when they start launching these things, maybe five or 10 per day, because that is really what they're looking to do a ton of these launches. He was saying that maybe they're going to create a mobile launch pad that will be in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> As it is now, they have those drone ships where the back end or the tail end of the rocket comes back down and lands on the back of that autonomous or drone ship and brings that first stage back to land. They refurb it. It takes, like he said, a day or two, and then they can reuse it again. Some of these rockets have been used already 18 times and they're still being reused. He also said that they were looking at getting 1 million tons per year of cargo into space. And that's where the Starship comes into play. He needs a way to take these million tons of cargo into space and eventually move it to the moon, to making a base on the moon, and then finally moving to Mars. So this fairing is very important, and that is why it's so big. He said when you stand inside the fairing, it feels like you're in the middle of a church, like a cathedral. That's how big this fairing is, which is really kind of crazy. Also, what I found very interesting is that he stated that the Falcon 9 fairing could be made larger. So right now we're seeing only 22 satellites that can be packed into this fairing. Well, if they make it larger, they can put more than 22 in there, number one, or maybe they could put like 10 or so of the large full-size version of the satellites, those version twos, but maybe not, according to what he was saying when he stated that in 2024, they're going to be launching version three satellites. This kind of threw everyone for a loop here because did he say this by accident or is this actually what's happening? 
Because if this is the case, in 2024, we're gonna see version three satellites going into orbit on this starship. Well, what the hell happened to the version twos? Because right now, that's all we're getting is the version two minis, which is kind of like this stopgap, let's say, moving into the full-size version, which they cannot fit in the Falcon 9. I guess the question is, will we ever see version two full-size, as I call them, version two maxis, go into space or not? According to Elon Musk, it doesn't seem that way. It seems like we're going to continue seeing the version two minis going into space throughout the 2023 season, let's call it through this year. And then moving into 2024, when he finally gets Starship working, they're going straight into version threes. What do you think about all this? Does this change anything? Is it simply the version three, just the nomenclature? Maybe it's just a version three because they called it that because the version twos really will never be able to get up there in time. So we're going to do all of these modifications instead of calling it a version two maxi or just a version two, since everyone is calling these version twos now when they're actually version two minis designed specifically a smaller size, even though they have four times the capacity, they are still smaller. They are version two minis and not the full size version. Maybe they're just never going to even call a version two a version two. And they're just gonna call it a version three and put on additional type of upgrades. What do you think about this? I don't think that he made a mistake here. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think that we're never going to see the version two maxis, as I call them. I don't think that they're going to launch. I think moving into 2024, just like he said, there's going to be the version threes that will be launching, and that is it. And they will continue to launch the version two minis straight on up through the year, and then possibly going forward into next year also. Because remember, even though they can get these larger satellites into orbit, these minis are doing a hell of a good job. So why not keep those going? They have a maximum of 42,000 that they are going to be launching. They already have approval for about 7,500. So does it matter if they just get a bunch more minis into space? Probably not. Once those version threes get up there and they're operational, I think Starlink is gonna get sick. I think latency is just going to dump. I think we're gonna see latency of between 10 and 20 milliseconds instead of 40 and 50, which will be awesome. And then once again, we're going to see data transfer speeds go just skyrocketing. I really do believe, like he said way back two years ago when I came on board with this whole thing, his goal is a gigabit internet connection, gigabit. Not 100 meg, not 200 meg, not 300 meg, 1000 megabits, right? One gigabit. That is the connection that he's going for. So we'll see what ends up happening with it. Anyways, what do you think about all this? Down below, what do you think? Do you think that the version two maxis, as I call them, will never come to pass and are basically discontinued, maybe in nomenclature, but also in actual physicality, where these version threes will be an update to the original version twos, which never got into space? What do you think? Down below, let's have this discussion. Also, how is your internet? Is your Starlink getting better? Is it getting worse? What are you seeing? What is your latency? What is your upload speed? What is your download speed? And where in the hell are you on the planet? Let's once again have the discussion down below. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in a vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.